Hi everybody, we are not recording a video this week but we are going to be posting an interview that we did together with Let's Be Heard. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically about us as an IIQ couple and we also share about our mm, experiences as we go around Singapore. And we also have a couple of questions that were asked in relation to sex. <laughs> <laughs> in case you're interested, uh, the video will be coming up right after this. Enjoy. Enjoy. Hi, everyone. It's time for our next Let's Talk series. Um, we're just waiting on more people to join us. Um, Zeus is so... Um, so Zeus is with me today um, for our live session because he can't be alone. Thank you. Okay, so I just switched off my Wi-Fi so all of us could... Uh, I, won't, I won't lose connection like the last time. So I'm gonna rely on that. Okay, so we're telling your followers that we've started a live video. So let's just hope um, that I don't see any numbers running up yet. So let's give it a moment or two. This boy. Okay, so let's see. So, hi. Let's see who's here. Yes, I'm getting more and more. So I think now it's just now that you guys are actually getting the notifications. Hi! Hi, hi, hi. Hi, so I'm waving at all of you guys. So welcome to my next um, Let's Talk episode. It's a, it's a fun episode. We are getting a um, very interesting couple to be on our Let's Talk um, season this time around uh, for this episode itself. Uh, Zeus is with me here. For those of you who do not know Zeus, um, because he do he doesn't want to be alone outside, so he wants to be with Mama. So yes, so we're still waiting for the numbers to climb. But then, okay, let me let me let me give you guys a brief uh, of a story of what happened. So I received this message from uh, one of our followers who was watching most of our la our last talk sessions, and then she's like, "Hey, Rich, why are you still why are you always drinking wine? Why don't you change it up a bit? Why don't you drink?" beer or apple cider and i was explaining to her that i don't really like sweet stuff um and i'm a very very wine person so therefore today i am drinking summer's bee this is very interesting because it's not sweet at all so it tastes like a sparkling water well it it says that it's alcoholic sparkling water can you guys see that um, and it's 4.5% alcohol and um, and the can also writes that it is 96 calories per can so not guilty right not guilty at all so cheers to those of y'all who are joining me today so we're gonna have an interesting talk thank you all for joining so um, now that our the viewership is climbing slowly most of y'all are getting a notification to join let me introduce you guys. I don't think y'all need much introduction, but um, this topic is actually called Queer Interabled Power Couple. Um, and then we have Teresa Go together with her part along with her partner Ken Kathleen, um, who's gonna be our special special guest today. Let me just do a very quick introduction of them before I, I, I get them in to the studio, into the live. I'm so sorry. So Teresa Go, I think you guys all know her, right? She's a queer Paralympic swimmer from Singapore, our very own. She represented our country internationally for 20 years before retiring the end of 2019. A former world record holder in the 50 meter and 200 meter breaststroke. SB4 category. I really have no idea what SB4 is, but I will ask Teresa in a moment. She finally clinched a bronze medal in the 100 meter breaststroke at Rio Paralympics on her fourth Games outing. She's an advocate for LGBTQ rights, especially in Singapore, but also aims to be a voice for other causes that speaks to her. Tersha strongly believes in the importance of seeing the ability in a person without erasing their disability. 
At home, Teresa also has four cats. Sad Patches, Lobster and Nyx, who she loves. loves. However, their love for her remains in questions. I love this kind of bio. And then we've got Kathleen G. And she's a peculiar individual who en enjoys picking the road less traveled. She was an early childhood educator and now is a freelance educator with NUS law degree. She is passionate about education and she believes that it is perfect platform. It is a perfect platform to raise awareness and discuss social issues with our youth. During her time in NUS, Kathleen volunteered with NGOs such as Project X and Singapore in Singapore and Scalabrini from um, South Africa. I'll definitely ask her a few more questions about that. And she works with sex workers and asylum seekers and refugees. Um, she's also very passionate about social issues and she's all about bringing change. Very much like all of us here, right? Um, that aside, she also has a three-legged dog. I've got soft spot for dogs um, called Cooper who loves food just as much as she does. I would vouch for that because when I was going through Kathleen's uh, IG, right? I instantly got hungry. I'm like, like I won't, I won't be able to be on a diet if I, I have, uh, if I keep following Kathleen on IG. <laughs> uh, she also has two white gerbils that are just as food motivated. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna invite our very guest up. Uh, you guys would love the questions that came in. Thank you all so much for posting questions. Uh, we're gonna have a good session. Hi. Hey. hey. <laughs> we're just laughing at your introduction. <laughs> I felt the same I, way I about her profile. Like, Wait. <laughs> I actually texted you guys like, "Hey guys, keep it to two lines." <laughs> it's okay. At least people get to. I, I get to know more about what who you guys are, what you guys do. I'm very inspired by both of you. Um, everyone is. I've received messages from the followers who knew that you guys were coming out they're thanking me for bringing you guys but actually i've got to thank both of you uh for actually agreeing and being a part um of let's talk let's just go straight into that like, the fancy part right um <laughs> can I, okay, I i really want to know first every okay i had like six people asking this same question define what your love means to both of y'all. I know, I didn't send you guys that, but it's supposed to be yeah. a surprise. It's supposed um, to be an element of surprise. I'm sorry, girls. I, think <laughs> I would describe it as familiar. Mm. I think we both agreed that um, that if there was something familiar about meeting each other. Um, and actually, our paths crossed quite many times. <laughs> Without like actually introdu being introduced to each other at first, mm. um, but we were in the same like um, you were part of this poetry slam and she actually attended a poetry slam. Um, I think we also attended a couple of concerts. We had the same well, concerts, but, uh, we but the, the poetry space. slam was weird because like apparently she was at the counter, the bar. Yeah. Uh, but that day, that particular day, she was not hosting. Mm. But usually she does. So then. I actually we were in the same area. It wasn't even a big area. It's like, you know, and then I remember going to that event. Uh, it was hosted by who? Wallish. Wallish at mm -hmm. Wallish. Yeah. yeah. And I only went for one Wallish event. Um, and she was not hosting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we were, we were at several places at the same time a lot, but yeah. not knowing until we... Were even at Pink Dot as well. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Pink Dot, like, we were, we, were, we were very near me, lah, right? Yeah. And I actually went to the Project X mm. booth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we, yeah, we just were not formally introduced to each other. <laughs> so, how, how did that introduction happen? Well, we actually met online. Um, and then eventually we started um, just trying to find out about each other's like interest and so on. And then we realized that we actually had a, a lot of common interests. Um, and our social circles were pretty much intertwined as well. So like everyone knew everyone as well. Um, so I was a little like scared <laughs> with this, um, yeah, with this discovery because I think most of the time we don't really know about, you know, like how strangers can actually intertwine our past um, and in our lives and stuff. And then eventually um, we 
get to meet and then yeah like from strangers we became yeah we turned into a relationship yeah nice nice that's a, that's a very interesting story um but for our guests who are here today, uh, our viewers who are not actually from Singapore, maybe Teresa and Kathleen, maybe you guys want to just do a very rough introduction about both of yourselves. Um, and just give me a little story about um, how you guys came out and how, how that happened as well. So um, I guess I'll start. I, <clears throat> I, I, besides all the introduction you've already given, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I've been queer pretty much all my life, uh, as far as I've known, as long as I've known. Um, I came, I didn't really come out, la. I, my parents knew along the way, uh, some, uh, I was pretty obvious, I guess, and then they, well, there was one day, they, my mom and dad were and I were at a petrol kiosk um, and my, my dad went out to pay for petrol. My mom turned around to me in the back seat and she was saying to me, um, you know, daddy and I just want you to be able to find somebody who can take care of you and it doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl. Um, and to me, that was that everything's okay, lah, you know, like they, I mean, after that, honestly, there were still several conversations or comments that made me feel like, <clears throat> they were human, la, you know, they were also still unsure and um, feeling their way around this whole um, this whole topic. And But the thing is, yeah, I think as parents, it's, it's definitely not easy, especially in this society where you, you know, you're told that being gay is still not acceptable entirely. Um, there's still, like, you can be this gay or you can be this loud you know and so i think that as parents there's certain there's there's a certain difficulty la, because I, I can't imagine the conversations they must have had behind the scenes in the bedrooms like you know with each other before they told me la, you know? and, and i'm really lucky to be so um well supported by my family um then later on i came out properly i guess publicly on the straits times mm. in 2017 um, and then 2017 also was when I was picked up ambassador, where you were at. <laughs> <laughs> I, were, you, <laughs> were you at other picked ups? Like yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, she, I'm, it just boggles my mind that like she was, she must have been watching me on stage and I'm just, she should have just crying. <laughs> I didn't cry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it's just been um, a pretty, for me personally, a pretty smooth journey. La, just because I'm pretty um, privileged and lucky to be the person that I'm born in, family I'm born into and stuff like that. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I think for me, um, I know like when I was filling up the form that you usually provided, I actually selected as uh, bisexual. Um, but this was actually a conversation I've had with Teresa many times as well. And I actually asked her, um, you know, like, I don't really know what I'm at. Um, and most of the time, I think when it comes to, like, gender identity or, like, sexual orientation and so on, um, to me, at least, it feels like most of the time, we actually select this label for other people to understand us. Um, so I think, like, in order to help people understand, like, the bisexual label, for me, is the easiest to go to because I have dated, like, both male and female. Right, um, but I, I actually have a very different story as compared to Teresa because I actually didn't like come out to to anyone. I didn't have like a, a video or like a conversation sort of thing. Um, and I think for me, like this is why I actually chose the term like peculiar because I've always um, done very quirky things. Like even since I was young, you know, I think um, my dad has passed away, but when my dad was around. Um, I got kicked out of the house many times for decisions that I made, like um, volunteering with Project X. Um, there is a sex worker organization. Um, even shaving my head for half a hope, like Cancer Society, was also something that he was very displeased with, right? Um, so I think right now, um, given that I'm actually in a relationship with Teresa, who is so well known, um, it was through our podcast, like the YouTube channel that we had, that a lot of my friends and family members uh, found out. So they actually had to watch the video to actually find out that I'm in a relationship with Teresa. 
Um, but I also took um, active choices to not um, flesh it out um, unless people ask me also because of like my occupation, you know, I'm a freelance educator and so on. And I think that the term gay agenda um, has always been a fear, um, especially in schools, because people think that, oh, you know, the moment you're a lesbian or bisexual, um, you will have this form of agenda to change children. Yeah. But <clears throat> the only agenda we were going to be who they want. And exactly. You know, <laughs> and I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not often uh, raised just how brave I think you are. <laughs> I think it's, it's really a certain level of bravery to be able to just like do a, a video series <laughs> with someone who's not. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not a, uh, uh, I'm not a, someone, I mean, I'm not someone who's not well, that well known. I think, I think, what? I think, I think, I think you, sure everyone would disagree. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm, okay, my name is quite well known. So like, I think to be able to do something like this yeah. is quite, is very brave. Aw, thanks. <laughs> It is brave. It is brave. Thank you both for sharing your stories with us. So actually, the questions that I, I actually re received from everyone who actually uh, posted questions categorized in three things, right? So one is actually for Teresa, one is for Kathleen, and then another question is for both of you. Um, so I'm just going to go to the, the generic ones first, right? So um, how long have you guys been together? November. Four, so four months. December, January, February, March. Five months. Five months. <laughs> five months. Okay, so yeah. you guys are... So, very new months. couple. Right, yeah. and before this, before this, did you guys date? Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. so about like two, three months? Two months? Yeah. Yeah. Right, so how did the... What's the story behind who asked who to be the guy? <laughs> 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 I have to say this. Theresa is one heck of a confusing person during the dating stage. Um... I think, like, <laughs> at the start there, you know, there was a lot of, like, boundaries that were being set. Um, and I wanted to respect that. Um, yeah, but I think both of us, like, I came out from a relationship uh, very, very recently when we, we actually started dating and stuff. So I actually told her, like, I also had a couple of boundaries because I needed to clear up the mess and so on um, before we got together. Um, and I think there was also, like, a lot of, figuring out like a lot of emotional baggage from you know past relationships and so on um and then i was also trying to figure out <laughs> where like because there were some instances that Teresa set up the boundaries and then she changed her mind immediately <laughs> and then i got very confused um yeah so there was a lot of um i think a lot of like laughter a lot of confusion um and so on. Of tears. a little bit of tears yeah <laughs> but the reason was the one that said she liked me. <laughs> I, okay, so now my, my side, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's always two sides. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree. There were a lot of uh, emotional baggage from previous relationships. And I think because this is only my second serious relationship, um, my first one was not very good. Um, she was pretty terrible. <laughs> Um, but you know, so it took me a while to heal from that, and then I after that went on to date just casually, um, and then uh, there was some there was some incidences of uh, miscommunication and misunderstanding. So when I started talking to Kath, I was pretty set on um, being clear with the boundaries. So my very first question was, "What what are you looking for?" You know, I don't wanna. Um, get into this and then you think we're looking for this when I'm actually looking for something else. So I thought it was um, good to be clear. La. But then how I know I'm also not clear, right? <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, uh, I was pretty set on something casual. And so was she because you know, of her, we started, she just broke up with the, the last partner. So then I also wanted to respect that. La. And I thought, okay, we, we take it slow. La. But I mean, sometimes things just turn out differently um, and I think it was it was pretty clear that we were both attracted to each other um, and there was a lot of uh, emotional depth and connection there and for me I'm not the ones I'm usually not the one to make the first move okay honestly <laughs> um, but I think with Kath I saw this as if I don't make the move now she's gonna 
run away. Like, <laughs> gonna run away. Yeah, she's gonna run away, and I didn't. I couldn't let that happen, lah. So then I made sure I made the first move, lah. I made I made it clear that I wanted her to be around. Um, but she did it very subtly. Huh? Um, it was over a text message and was beating around the bush. Um, and then eventually I just went, "You like me, is it?" I was, <laughs> and she just went, "Oh my god." <laughs> No, what were we talking about? No, we were talking about... We were talking about friends, like adding each other like as a friend on so, the okay. app. So, <laughs> we met each other on her app, right? The, the dating app, huh? Yep. And, and that's the option to either hug somebody or add someone as a friend, right? <laughs> so, for me, if you hug somebody, there is intention to date. <laughs> then if you add somebody, you have intention to be their, just be a friend, ah. So then I then she asked, are you uh are you my friend or something? Yeah. I say no because I don't just want to be friends with you. But she left it as that. Like she just said no, like you're not my friend. So no, I said I don't want to just be friends with you. I said <laughs> it was confusing. <laughs> yeah. So then we had to come to, like we had to kind of like confront each other on whether we actually had feelings for each other. You know whether we were going to take it to the next stage and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah to be clear, yeah. yeah. So nice. Yes. Okay. Um, I hope you're not squirming um, at all this though. <laughs> no, I think we all have that. We all have that story, right? Um, and both of us will always have got our own versions of the story, and that's what that's what makes like the whole couple story interesting. <laughs> so, um, so who initiated the first kiss? <laughs> <laughs> this was after a full day of hanging out with you, and then you actually saying that you were interested and so on. And yeah. it was actually like what time for me to leave, um, and I was actually really bummed out because she initiated like, okay, you know, I'm interested in you and so on. And at that point, I actually didn't know that she was someone that doesn't take the initiative to do anything. Um, but I think that night itself, I was frustrated, and I was like, hey, you know what? <laughs> like, can I kiss you um, <laughs> before like I go home? And she, yeah, she said yes. No, but you no, you asked. said I did. No. I did. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember this. No, you, you, you were leaving. I remember. Okay. 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 You go. You were leaving, and then I was like, okay, like you're gonna go now. So I got up, and then you say, wait, and you put me in. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But then she pushed me away. No, I, no, no. You did. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Right, okay, but how did it feel? How, okay, Teresa, how did that feel for you? Uh, it was really good. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I, I thought, you know, like, I think um, there are a lot of factors that help you kind of determine whether it should move forward or not, you know. So I think besides um, emotional connection, um, there's also that physical connection. La. So then whether there is um whether it feels yeah, it feels it feels right or not and it feels good or not. Yeah. So it felt good lah. La. So of course I'm like, yeah, let's go forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was very different for me though. Why? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean I pushed her away only because I I I was worried at the back of my mind about moving too fast and also uh worried about her going home too late. So then I miscommunicated my pushing away la. Um, and it, I didn't mean to push her away to reject or push away, you know. So it was more like I I, I think we need to pause. <laughs> yeah, but I think like at the end of the day, I think this is also very important for couples as well because like her interpretation of pushing me away had a very different meaning to how I interpreted it. So I actually thought like, oh, I was even more confused after that because she expressed an interest um, she wanted to progress, but then she pushed me away when I initiated a kiss. Um, yeah. So we had to then like come communicate. together and then communicate and talk things out again. Yeah. Um, to just like find out what really is going yeah. on. Yeah. I think with with Kath, like communication has been a huge thing. Um, we communicate over a lot of things, mm. like just to clarify or, um, I don't know, just just talking like Sometimes you just need a little bit more, a little bit more. You know. What your version of something it could you 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 already thinking about the expansion of what you think or say, but then the other person doesn't doesn't know what you're thinking. So I think with with her, I think that's a that's a very clear importance of communication, lah. Yeah. yeah, 
I, I, I had this conversation with a heterosexual friend of mine as well. Um, and she's a therapist. And she was actually explaining to me this terms that how we women, we tend to... Um, the term wasn't overthink, but it was more of... We, we are more rational, right? We like to rationalize things. And especially in a, a relationship with two women, just imagine two women brains coming together. The, both of them are thinking. And the only way to resolve that is through communication. Um, that was a very interesting um, um, chat I had with her. Yes, so that's that's for the whole communication part. Uh, and I'm glad that you guys have good communication. I think communication is key. Uh, consent as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I consented. I consented. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I've had this, like, a lot of sex questions, right? Uh, I think that many people do not know very much. Um, plus, this is not something that any friends that will just come up to you guys and ask you guys uh but let's talk here we're all about transparency and we ask questions feel free to reject my question as well if, if you don't feel like answering um but many of them ask um how's the sex like um and in two different ways number one is um firstly the disability and secondly um kathleen's bisexuality okay mm. Mm. I, I i just say first if there's any friends on here please uh, go away. <laughs> um, oh, no. Lunches are going to be very awkward. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, I think personally, just because my disability is um, maybe not so severe. So, I, I mean, I ha the only thing I guess I feel like I can't do is walk. Um, so, there's um, things that I, mean, I, did, I don't think it really affected too much in the bedroom. Um, am I? Well, what? Well, what's the question? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so how, how How's the sex? Yeah. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. you dare say no? <laughs> um, I think there's also a lot of okay. So when it comes to disability, another thing is uh equipment or um, I guess specifically in a queer relationship with one disabled person. There's things that again communication is key, right? Because you gotta talk about whether this kind of, this position is comfortable, yeah. whether um what can you do, what can you not do, what what should I do, what should you do, you know? Mm. Um so yeah, it, honestly it was a lot of experimenting. Yeah. Um and then there's a lot of like we try la, we try. Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't if, if it doesn't work then we don't do that. <laughs> but it's yeah. So just uh trying trying things out and in um Toys, yeah, are helpful. <laughs> yeah, definitely helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, um. I don't know. I honestly don't think that uh, the equipment or things we use are that different from uh, able-bodied couples. Yeah. Um, there's uh, just just a little bit more experimenting and um, yeah, communication. Yeah. Definitely. What do you think? <laughs> mm. Okay, maybe maybe I will I will I will I will drag this question out to Kathleen. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, did you actually think about how intimacy was going to be like with Teresa before you were even with her? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I okay. So, like, I used to work with uh, children with like disabilities as well. So, I I kind of had a rough idea of. Um, what were their capabilities and also their limitations as well. Um, and so I think like right from the start, like even when I, we were just hanging out at the start, I was already like asking her a lot of questions um, based on her comfort level and so on um, about things just so that I could actually have a better understanding um, of how much help she needed or how much independence she, she wanted as well. Um, because I think for me, I was um, kind of like stuck in between either being someone who was over helping or overcompensating or whether I was actually erasing the fact that she had a disability. Um, mm. So that was my struggle. Um, and so I actually sometimes I'll ask her, okay, like how much help do you need? Even if it looks like you're struggling, like am I supposed to help you? If not, then can you communicate it to me? Mm. You see? So mm. eventually when it came to, even with like intimacy and stuff like that, there was a lot of like conversation, a lot of giggling because we didn't know a lot of things. 
Um, and I mean, this also brings in resources as well, right? With the lack of like information on the internet and, yeah. and lack of like people actually sharing stories and stuff. Like we had to do a lot of figuring out on our own um, because people with disabilities also there's like a large spectrum as well. Um, yeah, so I think like communication was something that was very, very important and also the willingness to experiment because if someone, and this is actually really interesting because when we were together, I remember one of the conversations that we had was um, whether like who was the receiver and who was, you know, like the giver and so on. And initially, like Teresa actually mentioned that what you were the receiver. Usually I'm more of a bottom. Yeah. But I think also with how relationships go, sometimes it's dynamics, right? So um, sometimes dynamics just change. Uh, and whether your partner is also the kind to be more open to trying new things, you know, um, not not good or bad. Just sometimes people are different. Uh. Some people are just uh, more comfortable if they, they don't, you don't touch them or, you know. So um, I think in this relationship, there's a lot more openness to try different things. Um, definitely more, 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 um, more experimentation, more fun, uh, a lot of laughing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that helps also when you're trying to kind of navigate something that could be quite uh, tense. Awkward, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like in, you know, talking about disability and sex, I think uh, as a disabled person, you know, sometimes it can be quite hard lah, to, or, or to, to converse about this particular topic. So if you have someone who's willing to laugh with you, I think that's a big Good, good factor. <laughs> it's a good. It's a good thing. Yeah. I, I think I think from the um chats that we had for the past half an hour, what I get correct me if I'm wrong, right? Um, that Kathleen has kind of opened your communication line. I mean, she has taught you a little bit more about open communication and actually en encouraging <laughs> you to speak out and communicate as well, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's uh definitely yes, correct. <laughs> 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 I think there's uh, a lot of enablement um, for this disabled person. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and and, and enab enabled me to kind of uh, be assured like, in what I want and say, uh, in, in giving me the empowerment. Like, yeah. But how, but about her actually coming to you and actually speaking to you, getting you to communicate, sharing a few things, getting you to share, how did that initially feel for you? so uncomfortable <laughs> for sure i mean um just being the kind of person that i am i tend to keep things inside uh i don't really like to communicate uh, how i'm feeling or um maybe from past experiences feel like i can't say certain things or i'm not supposed to feel certain things or say this or say that you know so there's um a little bit of personality but also a little bit of uh, past trauma then, you know, um, yeah, so she's super patient, super um, willing to allow me to, to process and um, take the time la, to think. <laughs> and Kathleen, what about you? Um, did it come as a shock to you that Teresa didn't really open up to you or didn't know how to answer you? Mm, I think, like, sometimes I do, like, get the feeling that, you know, she's uncomfortable. Um, and then I'll ask her, like, okay, you know, like, put a pause to it. Like, how are you feeling right now? Or should we progress with the conversation? Do you want to put a stop? Do you want to take some time to think things through before, you know, we actually go through it again? Um, and sometimes, I think for me, it's always, and I, I'm guilty of that, I always tell her, like, sometimes... Um, even if I know the answer, I'll just pretend I don't know. And I'll ask her to explain to me why she feels this way, what's going on, and so on. So that there is actually clarity. And also, I get a better understanding from her perspective as well. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really a struggle for me to get someone that's, like, perhaps at the start uncomfortable or unwilling. Because, like, when I deal with kids, they are also like that, right? They will, tr like, throw temper tantrums and so on. And I think it's, <laughs> it's applicable to adults as well. <laughs> Especially in relationships, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I think good. there's uh, it was it was good. It's good that she's uh, had experience teaching with kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but one of the things that she she asked a lot or we do a lot uh, is uh, asking how are you feeling. Yeah. 
So something, you know, as simple as that, um, I think sometimes can open a lot of uh, conversations. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And what, what are uh, both of your pet peeves about each other? <laughs> pet peeves. Uh. One thing you cannot stand about caffeine. <laughs> There's nothing at the moment, but not 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 like I cannot stand lah. But more like sometimes she looks very fierce. <laughs> <laughs> like she when she's angry or upset, like it like it's also honestly it's still past trauma lah. Um, making my partner upset or angry. Um, so she may not be as upset as she's portraying, but to me it seems like oh she's so upset like she's gonna break out of me. You know that kind of feeling. So for me, it's just that feeling of oh shit like she's upset yeah but it's not her fault lah you know so it's it's a legitimate feeling it's just how i sometimes may portray it from because of past relationship or so us you know so yeah i mean there's nothing really i can't stand about you <laughs> honestly you're afraid right yeah, no. you're angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no there's really nothing lah honestly yeah likewise as well i think um even mm-hmm. if like there's something that we kind of like we feel uncomfortable or like we kind of like don't like and then we usually like at that moment itself we, we just talk to each other and say hey you know what like this is like bugging me um can we like do something about it or you know like can we yeah just change something mm-hmm. and like what i appreciate about Teresa is that more almost all the time or rather all the time <laughs> she will actually address it and actually do an instantaneous like switch and then ask me okay how is it now like, is it better? Is it still bugging you? And so on. Mm. Yeah. And it's not about changing for the person. Like, sometimes there's little, little things that you don't notice or don't realize that is uh, potentially a prob- problem, right? Um, and, and you didn't think about it. Just didn't think about it. And so, sometimes you just have to be brought to attention to it. Um, as simple as that. So, so, I don't really like to keep things too long. Um, every couple is different to be honest because some people need to sleep on it, right? But then for me, I prefer to address it immediately just because I, I get very uncomfortable when we are, we are quarreling or, or upset with each other. Like I cannot eat, I cannot think, I cannot like, <laughs> you know? So I, I like to address things quick, like now, you know, uh, if possible. Sometimes if she needs time to, to be quiet or be alone, then I give her the time lah. And she, like, why she also gives me the time when I need to think. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's uh, finding out also, I guess, what works for each other. Mm. Um, but that also was the communication part of it because we talked about it, right? Yeah. Like, um, how do you fight? How do you argue? Um, how do you want to be, uh, do you want to be left alone? Do you want me to be by your side? Do you want me to leave you physically alone? Mm. Or, you know, so all these things are also dependent on how whether your partner knows themselves. Yeah. <laughs> like they say, oh, leave me alone. But then actually you, they don't like when you leave them alone. Yeah, they play those kind of like mind games and so on. So we actually have to yeah. communicate that clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not about yeah. dropping hints, right? It's about just yeah. saying it as it is. You, uh, me you and have... my wife. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? No, no, go on, go on. No, me and my wife, we have this rule. Um, so we have, we, our rule is always uh, we can never go to sleep upset. So even mm. if we're fighting, we fight till like 5 a.m., uh, but none of us are going to sleep knowing that we're going to continue it this the next morning because it's um, communication is really important, right? It's not yeah. about yeah. holding it back on. Talking about uh, arguments and fights, what what is the silliest argument you guys fought about? I don't remember. Who do you remember? I don't remember a lot of things, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, my memory is really bad. She can vouch for it. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we've had Fights? Like, have we fought? No. We haven't fought. It's really early, honestly. So, yeah. Uh, come back to us in a year. <laughs> <laughs> I will. The topic is going to be arguments. <laughs> Start documenting it down. Um, I, I would like to bring the question um, to Kathleen again. Um, yeah. So, um, do you have any struggles that you face as a couple? Um, mean to say, as a being in a relationship with Teresa that has, um, who has disabilities, um, are there any struggles for you? Mm, I think it has actually brought on more frustration, um, not so much struggle, because I think being with Teresa, I'm now made more aware of the inaccessibility, like in Singapore, 
So sometimes um, I'll be like raging and I'll just be like, what the hell? Like, why, why is that, you know, that RAM so steep? You know, why is the, this space inaccessible? Um, yeah, and so on. And I think most of the time, like, Theresa, to me at least, um, is so used to the fact that there are so much, like, so many places that are inaccessible that it, she just becomes very muted or, or used to it. It's sensitized to it, right? Um, and sometimes she finds it really funny when I start raging, um, like, about these places and, and so on and so forth. And I think... Yeah, so these are things that we actually hope that in time to come, it will change. Mm. Um, that is one thing. The second thing that we want to actually talk about is also um, in relation to what we found very interesting was that like going out as a couple, um, we noticed that some people were either, they were either pay more attention to Theresa's disability or they'll pay more attention to the fact that I'm brown. Yeah, so like if you go to a Chinese restaurant, all of a sudden, I become invisible, even though I can speak like good Mandarin, right? Better than mine, honestly. <laughs> so even sometimes, like in situations where, like I tell them that, hey, I understand you. Um, you can actually talk to me and stuff. I'm just completely blocked off. Um, but then in other situations, um, Theresa's like disabilities sometimes comes up to the forefront, and people like kind of treat her as like very fragile and oh, so on. invisible or so, invisible. Yeah. So like yeah, so then they will like come to me and say, Oh you know, like does she need this, does she need that? Or like they only ask me for our order and I said like, Oh, she's there, you can talk to her, she also wants to order. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think this is something that's very interesting, um, as well. Um, that we actually noticed and we actually want to actually go and find out. Um, more whether people pay more attention to the color of your skin or whether to the disability first. Mm. I think it's very yeah. dependent and it's, wow. it's quite interesting uh, that I that we've noticed la, you know? and, and even um, like back to the raging like I think it's very interesting also because uh, I feel like we balance each other so when I'm angry about something or upset about something then she is the more calm individual um, then when she's uh, upset about something then I'm the like you know calm, calm down or like I don't tell her to calm down because that doesn't ever work okay <laughs> um, yeah but it's, it's, it's a balancing of each other or like when sometimes uh, even if she feels like she cannot um, inconvenience people uh, then I'll be the one to step up and no 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 you must you must set it right you know? then if I yeah. feel like I'm inconveniencing someone then she'll be like no you need to ask for it so I think it's it's a uh, Again, a good balance, lah, mm. and and yeah, for sure, it's intersectional. Uh, someone in the comment was saying, uh, it's it's intersection of uh, race, disability, queerness. Like, I think it's uh, it's There's a lot of overlap. Yeah, um, and, and it's very difficult to just pinpoint to one social issue only. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think yeah, when people look, at, obviously, it's the first thing they see is very visual, right? Yeah. Then, um. So it depends, it depends on their, uh, how they grew up, uh, their social circles, the kind of person they are. Then what do they notice first? What do they choose to focus on? And are they self-aware enough to actually not let that cloud their judgment of the yeah. type of people we are? Like, you know? Definitely. I'm so sorry that both of y'all have to go through that. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say as well. That's actually the question <laughs> I'm going to ask. Um, because people may not be very sure about what's the right thing to say, how to act around someone who is disabled, or how to approach such things. And it's the same thing that I did, Teresa. Like, I, I dropped you a message earlier. I'm like, is it okay for me to say disabled, disability? Is there a term that's um, preferred to be used? Because I don't have friends in that spectrum right for me to relate and, and, and to learn this is not something that has been educated that's been put out there right because it's so it's it's kept so safe and um it, it's it's not a norm to talk about it which i think is wrong i think that it should be out there uh, i had i had a very um a very close friend of mine he's actually deaf sorry <laughs> Um, and we were taught, so we, we studied in school when I was in primary school from kindergarten and we were taught to actually call them hearing impaired, mm. right? And my friend just reached out, um, we were having a chat and he said that, he just told me straight, no, we are not hearing impaired, we are deaf. Yeah. Yeah. We identify as deaf. 
So yeah. um, they find it offensive where for myself, I was taught growing up that hearing impaired was a, a nicer term to use compared to calling someone deaf. Mm. Um, but this is not an information that's been put out there, right? We are taught to be delicate and to be respectful. <laughs> and, we, and we learn that from our families because no one else covers this, right? We, we can't learn it from that. So my, my next question would be, how would you feel if someone would ask you or react sensitively around you? How, how, do, how does that make you feel? Angry. Mm. Huh? Angry. <laughs> um, I I get very easily triggered. There's uh, like she knows lah, and I've been trying to reframe my mindset. Um, I made mean, an example lah. So I um oh so if I'm I'm approaching a door that has to be pushed or pulled, I I can handle it myself. Like I I can push a door, I can pull a door. Like I'm I'm, I'm okay. Um, but people tend to like usually. If they see an able-bodied person behind them, they don't hold the door. But then the moment they see someone in a wheelchair, I mean, it's not a bad thing, obviously, right? Yeah, they're trying to hold the door for someone that you assume that cannot hold the door. But if I'm really, really far behind, and then you hold the door for me, and then I have to catch up to you, and then uh, make, make me feel bad a little bit, you know? But it's, it's just one example of, like, so I, if in my case, I would wait till they go through the door, um, the door closes, then I'll approach the door to open the door myself. Um, it's small things like this, but it's also because uh, over the years, like I just feel like I, I'm a bit more sensitive to it, lah. You know, I feel like people treat me like I cannot do a lot of things, and then it may be just the part of me that just wants to prove that I can do everything. Um, when when uh, people like they're standing a distance away, but the moment they see me, they run like almost run to the lift door to try and press the lift button for me when I'm perfectly capable of pressing the lift button all my, by myself. Um, and it annoys me, to be honest, just because I feel like you make the extra effort to want to do something for me because you feel like I cannot do it. And I feel like in, in a lot of cases, I, I feel like if I really cannot do it, I, it's my responsibility to go and ask for help. You know, if I, oh, I see something that is the, that the lift door, the button is too high, then I'm going to go and, oh, hi, can you please come and press the lift button for me? It's my responsibility. Um, and it's not, it's not for you to say, oh, I think you cannot do it, let me do it for you, you know? Um, but it's, again, intention, right? So intention has always been a good, like, it's always good so far. Like, everybody has good intentions. They want to do it because they want to help you, right? But then we also got to think about... Um, yeah, performative and whether they're doing it uh, just to show that I'm a good, kind person. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, a, it's a sensitive thing because it hurts people's egos when you talk about it that way or you say, huh? you say anything like that, like as though I'm being uh, rude or unkind. But the fact is there are two people in this thing. There's you and then there's me. Um, mm. Just because you feel good about it, how, about, how do I feel about it? <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and it's a responsibility of uh, both parties. Uh. So I think I get sensitive about it for sure. But I think the conversation that we had in the past week or so, like I, I've been, I, I've been trying to reframe, like, just trying to think about how I'm thinking about it and why am I reacting like this? Um, is it, is it uh, more harmful for me to be so angry about it? Um, or is it then, should I just uh, calm down and think about why they're doing it and maybe have a conversation with them about why they're doing it and, and mm. talk about how I think, um, you know, this could be portrayed as uh, them as as, uh, as a bad thing, like how it can be portrayed as a bad thing and potentially educate them rather than alienate them. Yeah. Hi, Nisa. <laughs> hey. <laughs> we just like watching people yeah. <laughs> tune in to the talk. <laughs> yeah. um, and I think that was exactly what um, Kathleen was mentioning, right? You don't know how much of help to offer. You don't know when to stop. You, that, was, that was a struggle. Um, that you face as well. It, it has, have you figured that out, Kathleen? Um, I think most of the time, so I basically told Teresa that like, if she needs help, just say it and I'll be there to help her. Mm-hmm. But then most of the time, you know, even if I see her struggling, um, I always like tell myself like, no, Teresa's very capable, she's very independent, she's able to do it. And even sometimes 
um, when she's going up like a very steep ramp and so on and there are people with me um, and some of them like want to actually rush to help yeah. her um, I actually like hold them back and say like no 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 no, no. just watch her like she's able to do it you know yeah. um, and I sometimes have conversations with people as well and I say like they view me as the bad guy when I'm not helping um, mm. but then I tell them that it's also very important to understand that the person with disabilities also has feelings and we shouldn't, I mean, as much as it's a feel-good kind of mentality, um, we shouldn't be doing it to make ourselves feel good, but also belittle the other person. Um, huh. It's actually very contradicting. It's basically kind of like a white savior mentality, right? Mm. Um, just that it's in an Asian context and so on. So sometimes um, I ask them, like, why are you helping? You know, sometimes they want to help, but then you're actually making the situation worse. We've actually had someone who tried to help me lift Theresa up the stairs and he pulled too far down and Theresa almost flipped backwards. Yeah. yeah. So even if like you don't know how to like especially if you don't know how to help, don't like gay camera, don't try too hard, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a very hard I think it's a very hard um thing to manage because yeah. it's there's a lot of ego work. Yeah, in, there's in ego, the there's uh <laughs> Intention, intention that's feeling like... good, and I think also because of how society has shaped us, right? Because most of the time, um, people always say, "Oh, if you're a female, if you're a child, if you're someone with disability, immediately it means that you're a vulnerable person." Um, mm. But then, most of the time, when I meet people, I always say, like the first time me and Teresa hung out, like we were at National Gallery, and National Gallery doors are like huge and heavy. And I struggled, as an able-bodied person, I struggled to like pull open the door. But Theresa, on the other hand, she was just like, yeah. <laughs> she had big guns to show off, right? She was just like pulling in and just like, switching around. She's doing it so fast. Right? Just me flexing, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the day, I think a lot of people um, don't make that realization that, I mean, especially for Theresa, Paralympian swimmer, you know, she has a lot of upper body strength and so on. And sometimes I tell them like, hey, you know, she's actually stronger than you. Yeah. Um, you probably need her help, not the other way around. Um, so there's a lot of like need, urgent need for people to actually pause and think, um, before they react, rather than immediately being the savior. Mm. Yeah, like, I think it's a it's a understanding why the moment you see someone on a wheelchair, you equate it to needing help. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Definitely. Okay, there was this anonymous question that came in. Uh, I've never thought about it. Uh, it might it may be a bit sensitive. Um, to both of y'all. Mm-hmm. Uh, they started off by saying no offense. Uh, <laughs> offense taken. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that is a good sign. And I'm seeing this right. I feel that this would be something that may impact you more. Uh, but I think I should still ask the question. Um, so for Kathleen, um, do people see you as okay? I'm, it's very okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So, um, so Teresa is already a public figure. Have people ever seen you in the sense that because Teresa is a Paralympic for Singapore, she's well known. Um, that's why you're in a relationship with her. Is have anyone approached you with that before? Um, was that a fear you had? This was definitely a fear I had. It's a um, conversation we had. <laughs> yeah, we had this conversation way, way, way before, mm-hmm. like much, much earlier into the con- uh, the relationship and stuff. And I told her, like, very frankly, that I'm an introvert. I don't like to meet a lot of people. Um, and I think one thing that I worried about was um, setting a good impression, like, to her family, to her friends. Um, and also, I think I was wary of the fact that people would actually assume that I was um, hungry for fame <laughs> and that I would actually utilize Theresa's, like, fame and so on to actually network or get things done my way. Um, but I think, like, my straight up answer is like, I mean, if people actually had that thought, I'll shut them down now. Um, because I think it defeats the purpose of actually going into a relationship with someone just to make use of them. Um, and I mean, why would I want to put myself through that? And why would I want to put Theresa through that as well, right? I mean, at the end of the day, these are very materialistic things. And the last thing that I want is materialistic gains. I mean, I'll rather go through all of it by myself and make sure that, I mean, this is, it relates back to like choosing the road less traveled, right? Because I think it's a lot to do with my self-worth, my ego, you know, my, my capabilities and so on. And I think 
like I choose these paths specifically because I see the potential for me to grow as an individual. Um, so definitely, I wouldn't want to piggyback on someone else. Lah. It would be too boring to get <laughs> things done smoothly. It's yeah. too easy. It's, it's too easy. easy. <laughs> and Teresa, so what about you? Have you ever had that fear that someone would want to date you because of um, your public image? Honestly, no. <laughs> because I don't think I'm that famous. <laughs> Okay, Lisa's out there. Lisa's uh, scary or anything. Like, I, I, I feel like I'm pretty, um, like, not, not that much in the spotlight these days, especially. Um, I don't know, I don't think She's I... She's just eating too large a humble pie. I don't, I really don't <laughs> think people, like, that many people know me. Like, I think I, I don't think I'm... Like, if they want to date a famous Paralympian, they they, they dating the wrong famous Paralympian. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, I just, I, I don't think I've had that uh, fear. La. Um, yeah, not, not really. Okay, talking about fears, right? Talking about fears. Another question that came in. Um, does Kathleen's bisexuality scares you as it scares most lesbians? <laughs> oh. I'm not like most lesbians. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> um, does it scare me? Honestly, no. Um, because I think that, like, like okay, so most people, most people have this phobia, biphobia, right? Yeah. They they unhappy when people uh, seem to have the choice of both worlds, um, and and they are, they are afraid that uh, they will leave them for the other. Like honestly, what's that mentality? Because if they were gonna leave you they were gonna leave you <laughs> like it's it's not a either or thing you know it's 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 i think very much uh uh removing from the fact that your your relationship have problems already and then you're just saying ah yeah because they easier to go back to a girl or go, or go back to a guy you know it's 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 a very big thing la biphobia in especially in this community the lgbt community yeah. um and I don't know, I've always felt like everybody has their own set of uh, complications. Um, being bisexual or, or, you know, the term that we have not found yet for yourself. Um, and the plus. Yeah, the yeah, the plus. <laughs> um, hasn't, it hasn't really been an issue, lah, honestly. Um, they, and like, I think Rogue and Richard actually said um, quite rightly, you know, yeah. like... Uh, like they can, they can always leave you for, for someone else, whether it's the same gender or not. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. Point about, the point about being either bisexual or pansexual or whatever is that they, they like all genders. And they leave you for a girl, they leave you for a guy, they leave you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but in the end, it's because it's like for someone else. I mean, if let's say you establish from the start that you want to be in a committed relationship, then I think the insecurity should go away. If not, then it should be addressed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's always the bottom line of that fear of uh, dishonesty. Mm. Then it's more than just um, this kind of things you should talk about. It's why are you afraid of them leaving you, you know? If you're specifically afraid of them leaving you for another gender, then there's insecurity on your own part, right? And I think a lot of people have the misunderstanding that like bisexuals will just... Oh, I'm dating a girl today, then tomorrow I'll wake up and I want to date a guy. <laughs> like, that's not true. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. yes. So, um, I'm going to ask this maybe, Kathleen, for yourself, um, how did your parents and your friends um, react to your relationship with Teresa? Mm, I'll start with my friends first. I think um, it was like, Mixed reactions. Um, there were people who didn't care like who I dated. Um, there were friends who were just like, oh my god, who is Teresa? I need to Google the person and, and see whether the person's good for you and stuff. Um, but there were also reactions that were, to me, quite surprising. Um, I mean, I've had close friends who asked me... Because, okay, my personal life, even my dating life, has, has been always very, very private. Um, so people actually don't know that I've been dating women before. Um, even with my, my like straight relationship and so on, um, were also pretty much very private um, and stuff. So when they found out that I'm dating Theresa, they were like, oh, why the sudden switch? Um, mm. I've even had someone's friend tell me like, oh, she's dating 
a girl like she needs a good dick to make sure that you know like she's straight and, and stuff like that right um yeah so and then i've also had friends who actually asked me um is it because you're so intrigued by theresa who is not of the norm and that's why you're leaving her so is it out of curiosity mm. rather than actually being interested in her so these were conversations that i've then brought back to theresa and i said hey you know what like we need to talk address, about this and, address, and actually yeah. make sure that it's not sitting at the back of our head you know um in terms of my parents so like my mom um she actually watches our youtube channel <laughs> <laughs> and my mom has always been so my mom is actually um okay my family is very complicated in a sense where we're made up of very there are a lot of traditional rules um my dad side is traditional like hindu indian and then my mom is actually peranakan chinese So we have a lot of like values that are actually passed down from generations to generations, right? So someone who is actually of the a queer individual is actually something that is very perhaps very strange or unfamiliar to to them. Um so when my mom watched the video, I actually had a conversation with her after she watched the video and I actually asked her like, "Oh, you know, so after watching the video, like how do you feel? Like what's your response?" Yeah, don't want in on this video. <laughs> wow. He's hugging you. <laughs> Would you like to ask a question to Oh my god. Okay, enough baby. <laughs> um, I'll just continue, okay? Even though yes, yeah, we enjoy. <laughs> so basically, after the conversation, uh, or rather when during the conversation itself, I actually asked my mom, you know, what do you think? And she started talking about um I think the first video where we t- were talking about like the disabilities and so on on Teresa's point of view right on Teresa's end and so my mom just skipped the whole part where we actually talked about us being an IIQ couple so then I looked at her and I was like do you see the full video <laughs> and she said yes I did and she could recount <laughs> like specific you know like uh events that happened in the video itself Um, yeah. but i think my mom like <laughs> even though um she is aware um like a very typical traditional asian person that she is um refuses to acknowledge that or something that she's just very uncomfortable or don't know how to actually address it so sometimes she'll ask me like oh are you seeing your friend mm. um even in my past relationships whether like you know with a guy and so on she don't call them my boyfriend she'll say oh are you seeing this person um you know like are you hanging out with them and he she always use the word friend and i kind of got used to it and i think at the end of the day i know to some people like acceptance by the family is very important mm. um but for me it has always been um the opposite of it lah i mean at the end of the day what i feel is that if you're not paying for my bills your opinion don't really matter <laughs> exactly so, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah Right, perfect. Okay, that was like a very good explanation. Um, and I totally get you because my family is a bit like yours as well. Uh, they mm-hmm. don't acknowledge um, uh, sure as my wife per se, but they call sure as sure. Um, yeah. but at the end of the day, I I also have this mentality that it's my life. If you don't feed me, who are you to say anything about yeah. my life? Plus, I think I also have this another set of mentality where it's more like as long as you respect. Sure, as my wife, you treat her as a human being. I don't need you to treat her as my wife, right? As long as you treat her with respect, that is enough for me. Yeah. Like, um, I don't, I don't expect people to be all hooray, hooray, and run around with my flag or, or <laughs> mm. put up a, a, a rainbow flag up in their house. That's not what I want, right? All yeah, I want yeah. is respect. Um, what I, what I don't believe in is disrespect. So as long as you respect someone, we're cool. You don't have to mm. say that you're an ally. You don't have to say that you support them. Respect is uh, one of the most important things for me personally. Mm. As long as they have that, I'm like, cool, we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we have been in here for an hour already. I want to bring the first question that I actually posted to you guys out here to the last one. Uh, maybe <laughs> Teresa first. What yes. are three things you like? like <laughs> love? Okay, wait, you guys have you guys said love each other yet? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. No, you know some couples it takes them like up to a year to actually oh really oh. the love thing. Yeah. So what are the things you love about Kathy? Hmm. Um. I like. I love that. 
<laughs> that she is uh, caring without being overbearing. Um, You're rapping there. Huh? Thank you. I'm rhyming. Um, I love that she is so smart. <laughs> She's so smart. Um, and it's, it's very easy to have a conversation with her. Um, all kinds of conversations. Any, you can talk about anything, you know. Um, and also the fact that she is can be too kind. She's kind, but she can be too kind to people who don't deserve it. Um, but that's also one thing I really love about her. Aww. <laughs> that's really sweet. <laughs> and Kathleen, what about you? Hmm. <laughs> um, I think one thing that really stuck out to me was... Um, the fact that, I think, okay, so there was actually one time I actually brought Theresa to one of my friends' place to do a podcast. And Theresa hugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically, the, the, my friend actually asked Theresa, like, what do you want to be remembered by? And Theresa actually said that she wants to be remembered as a kind person. Um, and I think that was something that really, really struck me because... Um, despite the fact that, you know, like she's famous and she's like a Paralympian and so on, um, she is very, very humble. And I think, like, I think a lot of people usually want to be remembered um, based on their achievements and so on. But a lot, like, not a lot of people want to be remembered for being a kind person. So that was something that really stuck out to me. Um, and I think, second thing is like, Teresa is one of the few people who actually. Um, understand when I need my own space. So I'm very much like a cat, right? Sometimes I'm just like, love me, love me, love me. And then other times I'm just like, no, I want my space. Um, <laughs> and stuff like that. So Theresa actually communicates that. And sometimes she'll ask me, like, do you need your space? You know, I'm hanging out with my friends later. Do you want to join me and stuff? And she gives me the option of saying no, um, which I think sometimes um, it's something that breaks down the relationship. Right. Um, yeah. And I think the... Third thing is that even though Theresa um, is a person with very, very few words, like she really compliments and stuff, but Theresa really tries, you know, like sometimes I will fish for compliments, <laughs> but other times she will actually um, put in a lot of good words, you know, especially in moments where I actually feel very insecure and I don't know whether um, I'm setting a good impression or, you know, like whether her parents, like what her parents think, think of me or of her friends and so on. So she always... Um, speak very highly and kind of like remind me of like my achievements and stuff like that. So yeah, that's really cool. Okay. Sometimes they need to be reminded why they are so worthy. <laughs> yes, um, assurance are important, right? Assurances. Okay, so uh, before we end it off, I will just like to ask you guys a few more questions. But here's the deal, right? Once I ask a question, I want both of you to answer at the same time. Wow. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, once I'm done with the question, same time. Okay, do you no go count. one, two, three? <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so you guys, I would say one, two, three, and then you guys answer. Okay. okay so the first question is, would you guys want to get married? Are you guys considering to get married? Or is mm. marriage in the cards? All right, right so two. one, two, three. No. no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, um, so... Second question. Um, will kids be in the picture in the future? Uh, do you guys want kids? Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I want to adopt. It's a maybe. Yeah, it's a maybe. Yeah. Considering why it's like adopted. Yeah. Kids. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, last question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, any consideration to um, relocate? to a different country. One, two, three. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, so you guys are kind of aligned. Uh, apart from the whole uh, kids, no. No, no, we so. are. <laughs> <laughs> we are spoken about all of these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Adoption was definitely oh. on the cards, but just maybe, yeah. yeah. Talking about adoption, um, are, you, are you guys aware of um, how we can adopt? here in Singapore? What I understand is that um, at the end of the day, because we will still be considered as a in single individual, so at the end mm -hmm. of the day, you, you can only adopt after the age of 35. 
Um, and there are also like considerations in relation to like your income, um, whether there is, um, I think they also kind of pay attention to family structure as well. Um, mm. Especially under MSF, um, if it's under like adoption and stuff, we want to make sure that there is actually a male and female parental guide, guardian sort of thing. Yeah. Wow. Right. So um, I think that's a reason for us to re relocate and actually achieve that dream of yeah. adopting, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, okay, so they are just to you, baby. They're just here to end the, the talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're the, you're the, the star today. <laughs> so thank you all so much for joining us um, sharing your stories being really open answering all the questions that they sent through um, and also taking your time to have your five minutes uh, chat okay say bye bye um, yeah so we will hopefully uh, in a year time you'll be able to learn a bit more about your arguments and um, and how you guys cope with that okay <laughs> <laughs> alright thanks girls thank bye -bye. you Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <sighs>